Hello, everyone. Welcome. TGD Tips right here on TGD Today. And I'm with you, Roy the Third, of course, PGA professional. And I'm George Honeycutt, your loving host. How are you? I'm lovely. <laughs> you look lovely. Hey, Hugh, again this weekend, a lot of things happening around the Performance Center. But uh, I must have had another three or four people come in, and they go, you know, I, you know, you ask them, you just try to be a good customer service provider, and you say, what can I do for you? And they say, well, do you, do you have a putting stroke for sale? And, you know, they go, well, we do, I, I answer by saying, well, we do putter fittings, but what seems to be your problem? Oh, well, I just got the yips, or I got this, or my right arm fell off, or, you know, whatever. They've got an excuse. And the current let's say, a favorite answer for the majority of the golfers that walk into the Performance Center is, oh, I've got to have a, a big grip. I've got to have one of those new big grips, whether that's a super stroke or a win or wherever. I've got to have one of those oh, yeah. I mean, it's because like Jordan used one, and this person uses one, and this person uses one. And George, <laughs> won't that take the yips out of my putting stroke immediately? Won't that be the answer? What do you say to that, Hugh? You can't carve dead wood, number one, and number two, it, not immediately, but it can. There is no instant fix in golf. I don't care what anybody tells you. They, I mean, you can band-aid something, but it's not going to last. Don't care how much money you spend or what. You're not going to Money can buy you a game. But, yeah. you know, it's like we played in the scramble the other day. You know, and Bray's using one of my old cameras, and he's got the cork tree. Cork tree. Bigger one. Mm -hmm. He loves it. You know, but it's actually, it's one of those that, you know, we talked about the weight of the super stroke compared to the regular grip, and that's heavier. Mm -hmm. You know, that one may be a little bit lighter. It seems to feel It, it is. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot of different variables. But you getting into the, the super stroke and mentioning that because Jordan uses it and, the, you know, Duffner and a bunch of these guys, it's something that will help because, yes, it will help eliminate the use of the hand. But people don't understand that, you know, you watch all the old stuff from Hogan and Mr. Sneed and all that, Mr. Palmer, you know, they all had the hands. They were pot putters. Well, they had to be. The greens were so slow. You know, they talk about hard greens and the fast, but they had nothing like what we have today. Right. And so putting is based off of your chest and your shoulders, not your hand. And a lot of these people that putt today, you watch them, and, I mean, it looks like they're flipping, you know, pennies to blind, you know, back in the day in the caddy pit. I mean, it's... You've got to take your hands out of it, and that's what that stroke, that grip is built for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what it does, basically, folks, just to kind of discuss the physics of it, the bigger grips, of course, you go in from a conventional grip, people have a tendency of really choking the chicken, as I call it. Yeah. They really get tight on the grip. They try to, and, and it's with every club. It's not just with the putter, but it's with every club. I mean, one of the first tidbits of information I give is just loosen up your grip. You know, that way you can release the tension in your arms, which then subsequently goes through the rest of your body. Same deals with putting, is that wider grip is going to open up the palms a little bit, hopefully relieve some of the tension in the grip itself, and enable the hands to kind of say, quiet. But what it does, George, is it actually takes, because it's so big, it makes the hand, right hand get stronger, the left hand gets weaker, therefore they oppose each other. So when they oppose each other, neither one can outdo the other. Mm -hmm. You know, like Mr. Hogan went weaker in his golf grip with his left hand to keep from hitting the hole, to help him from mm -hmm. flipping so much. Mm -hmm. Well, you take a bigger grip, you know, your right hand's going here, your left hand is there. And, I mean, how are you going to do this when this is already braced and locked here? This one's going to be locked here, so it helps to keep hands out of it. That's the purpose. Now, I saw a gentleman the other day, and, and he wanted to try one of the big grips, and of course, we have them on the trial shaft, yeah. you know, just to kind of get a feel for them. But I actually had a club with a 5.0 diameter grip on it, and I let him borrow it and hit some putts inside the shop there. And lo and behold, the first putts he made with the big grip, there was that hand breaking down. He's flipping it. And I said, as you see here, the grip's not going to help you. It's your putting stroke. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's just, that's it. That's exactly right. And he goes, well, what can I do to quit that? And I said, well, let's see. You can take a popsicle stick and tape it here. You can take a popsicle stick and tape it here and start putting like that as training. Mm -hmm. 
you can't do it on the course, yeah. but you can do it in training. I said you could look at counterbalancing, make the grip heavier. That way it takes a little bit of your hands out of it. It gets more of the shoulders and the arms into it with the heavier end up at the grip. I said naturally you're just going to have to use more energy from your body to push the club through the ball. He goes, oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. He goes, but I st- still keep doing this. I said, well, you know, you've got the Hugh Royer syndrome, what he calls the George. And he goes, what is that? I said, my hands are too close to my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, what did you do to get rid of it? I said, I went cross-handed. And he goes, really? I said, yeah. I says, but before you do that, that's pretty radical. Let's look at these other grips. Let's look at, at these other types of counterbalance weighting. Let's look at this. Let's look at that and see if any of this can help me. We grabbed a counterbalance to almost doubling the weight that was at the head of the club. And all of a sudden, you see the back of his hand going straight toward the target line. There was no breakdown. There was no cupping. Yeah. There was no stab at it because the club was so heavy, he had to take his hands out of it and start actually putting with his arms. And I tell you, the next time you do something like that, even if you go to the counterbalance, it just gets you a piece of it's a clear tubing, what they use in the hospital, put it around your arm and make it look. But get a bigger one and get it to where you can tie it around where their arms are to their body. Oh, a little and restraint. Get, and give them that so that the arms can't work away from the chest. It's almost like the triceps are going into the side. Uh huh. And when they hit these putts, it has to be the shoulders that rock it because if they get there and do that, it's, it's going to be like this because they can't get the putter back. Right, right, right. A lot of it is to where the hands take over and the arms. It's basically disconnection, you know, non-synchronization of the stroke. So by actually binding them up like that, it makes them have to tilt and rotate the shoulders, which is honestly the stroke anyway. Well done. Now, is there some other, besides me tying you down, I mean, could I've, I've seen like, like Calvin Pete. Take a towel and put it where it goes across the chest, under the arms, and so they've got to hold it in there. Exactly. They put head covers under their arms, and so if they come apart, the head covers fall out or the towel falls Great out. Great tip. They know it's wrong. Great tip. And I would suggest that before you go looking to buy that 5.0 or the 3.0 or the extended XL or or whatever grip you think is going to answer your putting woes, do what you just said. Try that. Work on that. And make it a work in progress. Don't just go out there and, yeah, I, I don't feel anything different in the first four or five putts and then give it up. This is an evolutionary process. I mean, you've got to get out of an old habit. And it's very, and, and Jeff, I'm going to keep this clean, but I mean, people will get the gist of it. But it's like I tell, you know, my students from the juniors to the tour players, to college players, to the seniors that come and see me, it's, you're not going to like the way it feels when you first do it. Mm-hmm. It's going to feel weak. You're not going to feel like you have any control. Well, you can ask me the famous question or ask George the famous question. Do we give up on because we don't. Unless you work on it, you get it. It's not going to get any better. These are tried and tested methods. And there Trust is no me. instant fix in golf, in anything you do. I mean, if, if you do something and it automatically works from the get-go, odds are it's not going to last. Right. Absolutely agree. So before you go and step off the ledge with acquiring new grips for that putter, or, you know, really – what I love, you is you get a conventional grip, you got a conventional grip, whether it's a Scotty or a Lamont Man or whatever, and then they come in and they want to go to the absolute radical extreme. And I do everything in my power to say, hey, maybe, maybe you want to ease into this. If you just absolutely have to walk out the door with a larger grip than what you're used to, then why don't we move into this gradually? And, George, honestly, explain to them when they do take that bigger grip. Whether it's, you know, the super stroke or the cork tree or whatever, mm-hmm. you're going to have a different feel coming out of that putter head when you hit this ball. Well, you're going to lose feel in the I'm putter just saying, head. Are you yeah. going to like that? Yeah. So, you know, go try something with it on first, mm-hmm. and then before you go putting it on yours, because trust me, getting them on is not easy, and taking them off sure isn't. So, no. you know, you think about it, and, and 
don't just and they're not cheap first. They're not cheap. I mean, these things are running anywhere from 19 at the low end to 29 to 32 dollars a piece for a grip, folks. I mean, um, I remember the days we paid that for a whole putter. So, uh, uh, okay, another helpful tip right here on TGD today with you, Roy the Third, and George Honeycutt. We hope you take our tips, and there'll be a lot more to come. But we hope you take them and use them and enjoy the game that we all know and love. So for Hugh, George, Jeff behind the glass, I want to thank you again for joining us on TGD today. And this is TGD Golf Tips.